Hello, everybody. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. I am very, very excited today to be chatting with David Ingram of Death Metal Band, Benediction, Killer Band, one of my favorite bands. Uh, super excited to have you, uh, David. Thank you so much for meeting with me. And, uh, and cheers. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks uh, Thanks for having me on. Thanks for thinking of me. Like that. Nice one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to have you on here. Um, I'll just take a swig and then I'll, I'll, I'll ask you some questions here. So, uh, All right. I think the first thing I wanted to start with, you know, kind of let's let's maybe talk about what's happening now. And uh, yeah. so this past uh, October, this amazing album was released. Um, Thank uh, you, uh, Scriptures. So you uh, you rejoined Benediction in 2019 after yeah. a 20 year hiatus. Basically, you hadn't been with the band it for quite was, some time. Yeah, 22 years. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So how? Uh, how did that years? happen? How did how what was the catalyst for you rejoining the band and and recording this this great album? Well, what happened was um, uh, they they were they got some festivals lined up that year and um, quite a lot of them. And unfortunately, the, the vocalist that they had, Dave Hunt, um, he was doing a PhD, so he asked the band, "Can I take some time out to, to work on my PhD?" And the band, of course, they said, yeah, you know, it's a, you know, a very honorable thing to do, very admirable thing to do. Right. And um, so he, he, he was going to do that. But and in that time, they were going to say, to, they asked me, would you come and do these handful of shows? There's like, you know, five, six shows as, a, you know, a special one-off thing, you know, work for the fans, works for us. And I, I said, yes. And then Dave Hunt, actually found that he couldn't commit to another album his work was his studies were going to take over and again very admirable and he he, he stepped back because of his studies he's still doing uh an all nathrak I, I believe oh, okay. uh, for the for the time being at, at least I, I don't I, I have no idea but um and um so they asked me would you like to be back in the band full time nice. and i uh, uh, I was in, having a conversation with my family, actually, my wife and my son, and they were both sort of giving me the thumbs up and nodding their heads going, yeah, do it. Um, and then, um, so I jumped at the chance and nice. uh, didn't want to turn it down. That'd have been crazy to have turned it down. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it When I heard the original announcement that you were rejoining, it was... Uh... And I don't, I, I don't think I can emphasize this enough how excited I was and how it, um, it was like, you know, when I heard about Rob Halford rejoining Judas Priest or, or oh, wow. you know, okay. Bruce Dickinson rejoining and, and maybe even, uh, maybe even a more poignant, more, I mean, it was kind of a bigger uh, effect on me, I think, just because it had been so long. You know, and it was kind of out of the blue in terms of, you know, as a fan, you're, you know, you're not realizing all of a sudden, you know, you know, I think, you know, I guess it was, I don't, I don't know where I saw the, the, the announcement that you were going to rejoin the band, probably on the, the band's website or the Facebook page or something like that. That was the first place it was announced. Yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah, it was, you know, I was elated. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Very, very exciting news. Um, and then of course, unfortunately, you know pandemic hits so yeah. but at least you you were able to record the album you guys got it out um and then uh, are there are there plans at this point for a tour for for the scriptures album it may uh, be well, too early we had, I guess. yeah we had all the the shows that were in 2020 and now a lot from 2021 have all been moved and we've got those in 2022 uh, there's a couple still this year that we might be able to do but it really depends on the lifting of restrictions and how the vaccines work and you know how, how governments feel and the science well basically what the scientists tell us right is, uh, that's the important part as far as i'm concerned so um so we have to wait and see it's there's an old phrase from uh, world war ii that my grandfather taught me and it's hurry up and wait <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah that's what we've got to do you can't do anything else except uh just sit around and do nothing for the time being right. but saying that i mean i've been busy i've been doing other projects um i don't know if i'm supposed to say this but i'm working on new benediction songs oh fantastic uh, lyrics rather uh, um and 
I've actually been uh, messaging with the guys today because we have a, a group uh, chat on WhatsApp, and I wrote, sent them all the the uh, song titles that I'm sort of working with. They're not set in stone yet, and I asked them, you know, which, which ones do you like, which don't you like, and so I'll know which one to work on first. So. Nice, very yeah. cool. That's some very yeah. exciting news. And I've got like two, no, three projects of my own that I'm working on. Uh, two with Roger Johansson and one with uh, Rick de Moussis, uh, it's a guy from the States. So things are, uh, are still rolling, but they've right. also been slowed down because of COVID. The, the one project, Hellfrost and Fire, was supposed to come out 18 months ago, uh, uh, sort of around the start of uh, the pandemic, and it just got wiped. For, right. uh, we, it was put in at the back of the queue, so which is understandable. And it's yeah. a, a record label in India, Transcending Obscurity Records. Oh, wow. Uh, great label. Absolutely great label. But I hope people understand what's going on, the situation in India right now, and that um, there's going to be delays, not just us, but every band on that label. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's horrific. So cut, cut the guy some slack. He's a really cool guy. Uh, Kunal Choksi, he's a fucking ace bloke. Oh, by the way, I didn't ask before we started. Is it okay, I swear? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Fuck for that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, you're good. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I was going to mention. Yeah, you have. I mean, you're a you're a very hardworking musician. You've always got a lot of projects going. It seems. Um, you know, you've got your. Uh, you know, I mean, the down uh, down among the dead men, yeah. uh, Stygian Dark, uh, uh, Echelon. Uh, I'm probably mispronouncing some of these. Uh, is it Ursine or Sin? Ursina. Ursina, okay. Yeah, you've got a bunch of stuff going on or, or you know, are in the in the works. Um, yeah, and also there's the, as I just said, Hell, Frost and Fire. Yeah. And there's a, a, a fun project I'm doing with Roger Johansson. Um, he's playing the guitar and there's two vocalists on that. It's myself and Mass Horlu. He plays guitar in the Danish band uh, Undergang. Oh, okay. Um, and he's a very close friend of mine. So I asked him if he wanted to do like joint vocals. It's a little bit like Absis or that other band that Absis and Autopsy did, Eat My Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's that, that sort of humor. It's really gross humor. <laughs> uh, the sort of, you know, frat boy uh, with a keg of beer inside him type of jokes. You know, it, 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 it's just a one-off. Nice. Um, be, there'll be some songs that'll offend people, I'm sure, but that's what it's about. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Don't take it seriously. We've just gone through a pandemic. Have some fun. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we were doing. So. Excellent. So yes, I've been being busy and writing lyrics for Benediction as well. So, and also my radio show. I do a my own. Well, it's a podcast. It's not a radio show, uh, but it's just it gets picked up by radio stations around the world. It's been syndicated. So. Um, but yeah, it's a, a podcast that I do, Metal Breakfast Radio. So I have that to do as well. So it's all go. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great. That's very good. And you, uh, I don't know if you're still doing this, but I, I remember reading uh, a while ago that you were also doing, and I thought this was interesting, that you also have another podcast, uh, a show called Lambert's Basement, which is big yes. band jazz, right? And dedicated that's to right. your father. Is that, yes. is that correct? Yeah, that's that correct. Um, the, the, the Lambert was his middle name, which he, he absolutely hated. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll call it that because um, he, he hated it so much. So, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he got me into big band jazz. Um, and uh, he, he was, I must explain, he was my stepfather. Okay. And he was more of a dad to me than the, the real one. So, um, but he, he got me into big band jazz. And uh, yeah. Also, if you remember the Tom and Jerry cartoons, the classics. Yeah, yeah, they they, uh, they they were very much the, the, the that that sort of music as well at times. So uh, so yeah, it, it, it was that, and obviously my dad mostly. Um, but yes, it, it, in fact, with Lambert's Basement, it's been on. Uh, it's been um, I've been doing the uh, rebooting the old shows. Oh, correct. Uh, the first nine episodes of the show uh, have been on. Uh, um, on radiofreesatan.com if anyone's interested you can go and look it up it'll be there perfect yeah i'll i'll uh, i'll i'll put the link in the in the description so everybody look down and you'll see the description and, and links to uh uh to those pages as well as the benediction pages as well uh, as well and 
Yeah. So we'll have some links down there so people can check that out. That's cool. Cool. Thank um, you very much. Man. So, well, speaking of, uh, you know, your, your stepfather getting you into big band jazz, um, maybe you could take us, you know, let's go back in time a little bit. And how did you originally get into music? Wow. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say it was back when I was seven years old and my sister was playing uh, Black Sabbath's Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath nice. album. And it, it was that she put the needle in the groove and it's that first riff that initial riff from the song, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, the title track. Uh, and it's one of those crystalline moments for me. And um, I was hooked. Uh, and I knew that music was going to be a huge part of my life. I mean, it already was. The, 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 our household, when we were kids, we always had music playing at some point in, in one of the rooms of the house. So, so yeah. Um, but, but that was the, the moment I knew that my personal choice of music was going to be on the more heavier side hmm. and so it went from black sabbath and then i think my first single the first seven inch i ever bought in fact it was it was uh, the clash a song called tommy gun oh yeah nice uh, sort of got that way and over the years sort of, i've gone more to punk as well as to, uh, to metal and it's gone you know gone around a bit so i've i've I like to open up and listen to a lot. These days, I can listen to pretty much anything as long as it's written with heart. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not mass-produced crap. That stuff I hate. But, right. you know, if there's an actual person behind it who's, who's written it, then uh, yeah, I could probably listen to it. Nice. Interesting. I, uh, I read a quote recently um, by... Uh, it was in an interview, I think, uh, Jeff Becerra from Possessed. And he was talking about how he thinks right now, because of uh, and what reminded me of this is you, you mentioning mass production, mass produced music. Um, but he, he was talking about, he thinks that what the most interesting music that's happening currently is death metal. He thinks oh, it's, yeah. it's the most intricate, um, the most artistic. Um, I'm like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And I mean, and it feels like there, it feels like there's kind of a renaissance in death metal music to, i mean it's never gone away but it almost feels like there's a yeah. renaissance with with especially kind of classic bands like benediction uh carcass uh morbid angel um you know uh, it, it, at least that's my impression at least oh, yeah. in the states yeah. um you know it just kind of feels that way which is a very good thing i think <laughs> especially when it's yeah. you know passionate musicians which is what i've always been drawn to you know one of the reasons and the you know, obviously the aggression and the heaviness but the fact that it's it's very musical um, mm. uh, has always kind of drawn me to death metal. So, uh, but yeah, that's 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 really cool. That's interesting. How did you, uh, in terms of, of vocals, how, when did you start singing? Uh, you know, what inspired you to to become a singer? Uh, well, it was I was before Benediction. I was in this uh, hardcore punk type band, um, and yeah, the the. We weren't very good. Let me just say that right now. Um, but the, the singer in that band, I was a bass player at the time, but the singer left uh, the country. So we thought, okay, we'll, we'll continue without him. We had a couple of gigs lined up, so, uh, which I think in total we played four gigs in, in three years. Um, and it was the last two gigs he, he didn't sing with. So I sang at these shows. Um, and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm enjoying this. And I found I was a better singer than I was a bass player, to be quite honest. Uh, so then um, I decided to focus on that. And with, with Benediction, uh, I met them in the pub. There was a pub called the Costamongers that everyone used to go to. Uh, it's, it, we, we sadly lost it to COVID recently. Oh, so. um, but anyway, it, it, uh, I met them in there. They were looking pretty glum and they said, oh, yeah, we, we've lost Barney. He, our, our singer's gone. He's joined Napalm Death full time. So I said, I'll, I'll audition. Give us a, a try. And, uh, well, here we are today. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, that was, what, 1990, 1989-ish? That was 90, yeah, 1990, 90. August of that year. Wow, that's, a, that's pretty cool. And, and so you were originally with the band for eight, nine years, um, uh, you left in what 98 uh, and yeah, you joined Bolt, yeah. Bolt Thrower um, and 
uh, and then, you know, kind of over the time you've, you've done other things, but, uh, and then now, of course, you're back in Benediction, which is very exciting, very exciting news. Um, yeah, that's it's it's funny how just first full circle <laughs> how, how that's. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it it didn't feel getting back with the guys and meeting up with them and the humor is the same same sense of humor. I mean, okay, we've all matured a bit, right. but we still have that same, uh, you know, little childish English humor. Um, which can be childish at times, but you know, <laughs> it's still funny, the things we, we, we get up to. Uh, and of course, there's new, new blood in the band and younger blood as well, like with yeah. Gio on drums and Dan on bass. And I feel this is, uh, and I think the band would have to uh, agree, I think they will agree, is, uh, this is the strongest lineup. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think, yeah, I mean, from, you know, when I put the needle down, uh, on that first track i mean it just you know it's it's sonic it's explosive it's it's great it's pretty amazing just and yeah it doesn't sound like uh it's not nostalgic it's fresh it's new but it's benediction it's uh yeah yeah that, very that's tight. exactly what we what we wanted to go for we wanted it to sound modern but we still wanted that benediction sound yeah and uh scott aikens the producer captured that he captured both elements and and blended them together perfectly i agree uh, i agree and it seems like a very tight band um musically it's it seems you know that the band is very tight so I'm, that's why i'm really excited for live shows to see see you guys playing on stage i think you know hopefully you'll get to the states um yeah eventually uh, here. i mean because of the obviously because of the pandemic we we haven't rehearsed uh, and I know a lot of bands have been doing this uh, streaming concerts. Right. They all get together and film it and it gets streamed or live streamed, whatever. Uh, well, we can't because our drummer lives in Italy. I'm in Denmark and the other three guys are in England. So, yeah, we haven't been able to do that and we haven't been able to rehearse at all. So yeah. we haven't actually played together since December 2019. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was a lot, one of the last gigs we played was in uh, Italy. Um, it ran, uh, yeah, in, in December of 2019. We were supposed to play a, a South American tour and sadly we couldn't go. I got ill, had uh, you know, problems with my hip, uh, which has been replaced. Oh, and wow. since then I've had problems with my other hip and that has also been replaced. Oh. So um, I'm pretty much part Cyberman by now. <laughs> wow. That's, uh, I just noticed your, uh, uh, as you lifted your beard, you have a Dalek tattoo on your oh, that one? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I got and, one on this side as well. Oh, nice. Very cool. And, and <laughs> you and I had talked about this uh, prior to the interview, that you're a pretty, and obviously with the tattoos, you're a pretty massive mm. Doctor Who fan. Absolutely, yes. Um, <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, that, that that swig of beer has gone the wrong way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I need another one. No. Um, yes, uh, it, it's the, the, the greatest show ever and my, my absolute favorite. So, of course, I'll be covered in tattoos from it. Um, and you can't see, but right here, all along this, this stretch here, there's uh, videos and DVDs. And I mean VHS. Oh, nice. I have the original VHS. I, I, I kept them all. Um, and uh, some CDs, some of the audio from the uh, Big Finish. And then over in that area of the, the room, it's full of Daleks and Cybermen and uh, in various sizes. Nice. Uh, oh, uh, hang on. There's one. Oh, there you go. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. But uh, yeah, I, I've got, I don't know, I've got about 60 of these things. So. Wow. And uh, uh, multiple TARDISes and all this. Yeah, I, I'm a, a complete Doctor Who nut. Trust nice. me. Trust me, I'm the Doctor. Nice. That's great. That's great. Do you have a, uh, maybe this is a loaded question, but do you have a favorite Doctor? Yes, the Doctor. <laughs> nice. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. yeah. But if, if you look at it, uh, the incarnation, I would say then, uh, in the classic period, uh, it's difficult to choose between John Pertwee because he was sort of my first, yeah. and and to obviously Tom Baker. Hmm. Um, 
but in the modern Doctor, I'd have to say uh, Peter Capaldi. Oh, okay, cool. Because he brought uh, to me, he brought the gravitas of the, the classic Doctor back into the show. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's a yeah, that's that's a really good point. Yeah, I, I was introduced when I was a young child. I just remember mm. watching it with my grandfather, and it would have been was it on PBS or something? Yeah, it was on PBS exactly. Yeah. So it was you know, uh, and I, I remember seeing the original, so you know, black and white, and then. And it's a very vague man. I was real, really young, and then I and they would show you know the older version, you know the older mm. uh, shows. Um, and I remember seeing, uh, yeah, John John Petrie uh, with oh, my true. father. Yeah, and I thought you know he was he was pretty cool. I like I liked how he was very stoic and very serious and kind of yeah. angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he was he was kind of a grouch, but a lovable grouch. Yeah, yeah, mm. and then I think. I kind of lost, I guess it was, I was in high school and they were showing and it was late at night, which I thought was bizarre because, you know, it's, it's basically a show kind of, you know, I mean, it was originally written for children, essentially. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were showing it in the middle of the night on PBS. I mean, you have to stay up until like one o'clock in the morning to watch it. And it was, <laughs> it was the Tom Baker and they do marathons with Tom Baker. And yeah. I just fell in love with the show over and all over again. And just ever since then I, I was, yeah. Just oh, really, cool. have you have you ever? This is a stupid question, but have you ever thought about writing a writing a death metal song about Doctor Who? Or have you heard of you know the band I, I do down among the dead men? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Every song, every single song is about Doctor Who. Oh, okay, perfect. I, I, and I, I I've heard of I haven't heard it. I've heard of okay. it. I know of the band. I just haven't. I need to check yeah. that out. Yeah. Well, if you, you want to. Uh, clarify that uh, the, the second album it's titled exterminate annihilate destroy oh perfect <laughs> so there you go so yeah, yeah. very obvious it, then. yeah it, it gets my 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 sort of my doctor who vent i can vent all my uh my, my geekiness that way uh although uh, admittedly there's a few hints and subtle um what, what would you say um yeah references on the scriptures album as well Oh, okay. I've sort of hidden them in there. Cool, cool. I need to reread the lyrics. I think I, I've missed some yeah. things, I think. So yeah. my apologies. I, yeah. No, 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 not at all. Yeah, I need to need to look into that. Um, uh, one thing I, I was going to ask you about, too, and kind of swinging back to a to, uh, uh, good time with the Scriptures album. Uh, so Cam Lee of Massacre uh, had a guest spot on there, and it was just announced you're going to be doing a guest spot on a massacre track that's being released uh very soon i think in the next uh month or so uh, yes. like, yeah that's, that's correct that's exciting. Yeah. yeah that's a yeah. very exciting news yeah i mean i, I, I cam has sort of sworn me to secrecy so oh. i just said well if ever i'm asked i'll just say that i'm sworn to secrecy but uh yes there, there, there will be that coming so nice. um and i honestly i cannot wait for this new massacre album yeah um I keep making subtle hints to Cam, saying, uh, "You know, can I hear it?" But <laughs> you know, but I, I don't actually say it directly like that. I, I sort of subtly hint. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it, mate. Honestly, mate, I can't wait to hear. It. I can't wait to hear it. But no, nothing. Nope, won't do it. So I'm going to have to wait like everybody else, which which is okay. But um, yeah, this is the real massacre. Except no imitations. Perfect. This is the real deal, so I can't wait for it. So yeah, pleased! I'm, I'm really excited to uh, to hear that, and uh, maybe this is way too early to, uh, but you know, hopefully, maybe a massacre benediction, you know, Bill someday. Uh, well, saying that, <laughs> um, it, it's a bit of a way from you, but uh, in Germany, we're planning on something for next i don't know if it's later this year or if it's next year but we're actually we are planning a uh, a gig a couple of gigs maybe three actually um in germany uh, so we have that to look forward to nice that's exciting and very exciting what, what, what do you what do you talk i'm just gonna open another beer oh perfect perfect yeah. what, what are you uh what are you drinking this time this time it's uh, an anarchist it's another anarchist but it's called uh, Bloody Weizen. Oh, nice. Uh, 
Yeah, oops, I'm dripping all over my laptop, damn it. Um, and um, it's like, basically, it's a blood orange beer, uh, IPA. And uh, it's actually my favorite beer ever. Oh, okay. I used to have a different one, which uh, was a, 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 well, this is Danish as well, but it was a, a very um, a plain Danish IPA. Uh, but then I found this and um, I fell in love with the damn thing. And uh, I've, a lot of the, the, the local supermarkets have been selling it uh, cheaply. So I've been coming home from work every day with like 20 bottles of it. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, Oh, yeah. um, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that was something I wanted to ask you. I mean, I talked to you a little bit about tea. I mean, yeah, you're a, you're a big craft beer fan. Uh, yeah. My page is, you know, all about craft beer and, and heavy metal. Um, uh, do, when did you uh, acquire a taste for craft beer? How long have you been into that scene? Well, it's sort of, it, it's going to go like this. When I lived in England, before I moved to Denmark, I drank a lot of cider because uh, I love the sweet flavor in, in drinks. I have a very sweet tooth. Uh, and I, when I moved to Denmark, I mean, this was 23 years ago, uh, they, they, there was no ciders. There was no craft, obviously no craft beers. It was just the, the lagers, the Carlsberg, Tuborg, oh, right. the standard stuff. Uh, and sometimes it was a little more bitter or a little more heavy or the stouts as well. But um, so I, I lost my sweet tooth. Now, if I wanted to drink beer, I had to drink this domestic stuff. Um, and then when I, I found these craft beers, when they, they suddenly started coming out, uh, I, uh, I fell in love with them immediately mm. and because of my sweet tooth. And it's actually, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a blend of the two. It's the sweetness and the bitterness and the, and the sourness as well. Yeah. Um, it's just just perfect. And yeah. you, you can tell a, per, a man who loves his craft beer, not by his beard, but by <laughs> his waistline. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah. Yes, unfortunately, I, I keep having to, you know, rebuy my jeans because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a bit big. Yeah, I hear you. Well, especially this, yeah, I've got the yeah, pandemic body going. <laughs> so. Oh, I've got that as well. Uh, yeah. And that's another thing. Um, I found uh, some of our local supermarkets, they've been selling boxes of Twinkies. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they, they import them because you know, we don't actually get them here, but they import them and they sell them quite cheap. Oh, and, wow. like, I, I'm a big fan of Twinkies. Nice. Uh, and, yeah, so. I, I, I saw that you had posted the other day that you were, you were dunking Twinkies, Twinkies in, was it strawberry milkshakes? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I need, think I need to try that. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Actually, and the thing with that, that particular type of strawberry milkshake, I'm actually looking at a carton of it on my floor right now. Oh. I have a, a stash a stash of them under my table here. Um, but uh, that particular milkshake is so thick. It's really thick. But if you put it into a cocktail shaker with some vodka and mm -hmm. other few little ingredients, just to you know, sharpen it up a bit, give it a good shake. And, oh, it's absolutely delicious. Very good. Very good. And yeah, if you if you're careful, if you're good at mixing cocktails, well, I'm not particularly good. Uh, it's a bit hit and miss with me. But you know, you can sometimes make a, a, a quite a nice cocktail. And with that strawberry milkshake, wow! But yeah. I don't want to dip Twinkies in it. That's going to ruin the Twinkies, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and another thing with Twinkies, if anyone would really like to know, freeze them in the summertime when it's really hot. Oh. Have them frozen. Absolutely amazing. I should try that. That's interesting. Yeah, it there's really a, works. There's a bar restaurant here in Utah. It's in Salt Lake City. That uh, It's called the Bayou. They're a southern style restaurant. But they have a massive beer selection. But they do a deep fried Twinkie and they serve it with strawberry, uh, raspberry sauce. Okay. It's delicious. Yeah, I, I had one in uh, when I, I was doing the, um, the Hail of Bullets gig at Maryland. Uh, I walked through the, the Maryland Festival with a, with a friend of mine, a journalist called Joel Gostin. Fucking wonderful bloke he is. Um, and he took photographs of me buying and eating a deep fried Twinkie. I'd never had one in my life. Nice. And uh, yeah, I, it, was, it was just uh, dipped in uh, icing sugar. Oh, okay. Because uh, they said, do you want this on it? Do you want that? And I was like, no, 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 no. I want to taste a Twinkie. Right. Yeah. 
No. So uh, I, ha- I had that, and uh, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Nice. Uh, I, I can <laughs> recommend. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I, I I thought it was great. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, and this one, I think the 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 raspberry sauce came as a as a, as a dip, so you could just eat it right, you know, to get a nice yeah. get the nice taste of it. Um, but also that bar, uh, that's the only place I've ever had a Danish beer. Um, uh, you know, a, a craft beer, Danish craft beer. They imported. Okay. Um, it's oh, if I can remember the name of it, it's uh, two. Uh, I can't remember. I, they're a gypsy. They call themselves a gypsy brewery. They don't actually have a, they didn't have a physical location. So they would rent space from other breweries in Denmark. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've heard of this, but I can't remember the name, but yeah, I've, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that. They did a, um, and it's the only time I think I've ever had one. They did a coffee IPA that's incredibly bitter, but I loved it. My, I was there with my father and he thought it was disgusting, but I thought it was fantastic. Okay. Uh, but I've had a couple other beers of theirs that I really, really enjoyed a lot too. But they're kind of, I mean, they're imported. They're pretty expensive. Um, you know, you kind of have to have a, you know, when I went in, I knew I was going to be paying like $30 for a bottle. You know, and it's a 25 okay. ounce wow. um, okay. bottle. But still, it's like, okay, this is going to be a little pricey, but it was worth it. It was great. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Well, it, we, we, we have... Uh, there's a lot of the, the micro breweries o- over here. Um, and uh, yeah, the, it, it can get expensive. I mean, Denmark is known for being pricey, but for me, it, it's not that price because I live here. Like if, it's more pricey if, if, if you, uh, when you visit. Right. So. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. And yeah. you said you, you've lived in Denmark for 23 years. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. How did yeah. you, if you don't mind me asking, how did you end up in Denmark? Uh, back in 95, uh, we were on tour, Benediction, we were on tour with Death, and we came to Copenhagen. We'd been here a few times before, and um, uh, I met this girl, well, or I should say woman, um, and um, she was, you know, we were the same age, although she's a little bit older than me, uh, and, and she's, I think she's in the other room, so I have, I, I better be careful what I say. Right. So, um because uh, I think she can hear me. Anyway, um, yeah, w- we met and we ended up having a, a long distance relationship for three years. In the end, I was spending more time in Denmark than I was in England. So I said, I, I, I might as well just move here. And I did. And I have never regretted a single day. Nice. So uh, this nice. is the, the, the greatest country to, to live. I swear, if you're tired of America, if you're tired of anywhere, Come to Denmark. Nice. Uh, it, it's the, the great place to live. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's still true, but I remember several years ago, I remember reading a, a, some report somewhere that said that, yeah, the Danish people are the happiest people in the world. Uh, yeah, the, the, they say that. Um, it's also the country that takes the most um, antidepressants, apparently, you know, oh. but by <laughs> per, per, per the population. Per, the population. Oh, but, right. uh, and also it's the second most the second country with the, the most people who smoke cigars interesting as well cuba's first and then denmark's second i did not know that that's interesting yeah. and it's uh let's see what it was the other statistics the seventh most difficult language in the world mm. to learn uh and the second most difficult language in the whole of europe but finnish you, being the the first are you fluent now in, in danish sledding no, no, um, no, not at all, not <laughs> at all. Um, but, th- but what what happened for me to learn Danish? Um, uh, I sort of learnt it from my son when he was growing up. He he spoke Danish, so as he was growing up, I was learning it from a child's level all the way up. So oh. that really helped. Right. Um, and I mean, I've been working at this the same job for the last fifteen over fifteen years now, and. Um, uh, we speak Danish all the time there. So that also helps. So, and ha- being able to work a job like that um, is uh, you, you need to speak Danish. Right. Uh, but right. once you get thrown into it and you, you pick it up, you know, there are certain things about the language that I, I don't like. Uh, the fact that they speak very, you know, the Danes will speak very quickly. And I don't know where one word starts and, the, and then the next word, you know, <laughs> right. 
where it all comes in together. Uh, it's just one long stream of, of language. And you have to sort of, you know, you have a few seconds in your head to try and work it out. So uh, that that's one thing. But, uh, I mean, besides that, it's a beautiful country. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Hurrah for socialism. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. It's not socialism here. Don't worry right. about it. Uh, yeah, my, but, uh, uh, it is very nice here. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's it seems like a you know all the photos I've seen it seems like a very beautiful country and um, I've always wanted to go. My so I'm Danish on my father's side and he actually oh, had cool. planned. He and my brother were gonna were going to go to Denmark last. I mean they had planned a couple of years ago to go last year and of course yeah that's out the window. So hopefully he'll get get together because apparently from what we understand the the, the old family home is still standing it's in ruins but it's still standing apparently oh wow uh, i don't know where it is exactly i think northern denmark i'm probably wrong but uh and the, the name is jensen jensen um, hmm. so but anyway that's hmm. neither here nor there but yeah, yeah i've always wanted jensen. To jensen is the uh, son of jens yeah yeah so yeah. yeah, I always wanted to get. Yeah, hopefully I'll get there someday. So yeah, I've, I've heard it's yeah beautiful. Let me know if you're coming, man. Yeah, I'll I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> oh, oh, mate, I'll buy you a case. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We'll have Twinkies and beers. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh yeah, maybe not in the same city. Yeah, maybe. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that would. I don't know how that pairs together. Yeah. But. Well, it might work with this 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 uh, this beer. It works yeah, well yeah, with that. Know. I'm sure. Like this stuff is so sweet. Like, we have a, there's a, it's not necessarily, it's a kind of an unofficial uh, tongue-in-cheek holiday here in Utah where I live. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, Utah is mostly Mormon, you know, a lot of you know, Mormon pioneers. So yeah, they have a, holiday, got a, friend a state who holiday. Well. Yeah. Mm. There's a state holiday called Pioneer Day. So those of us that are not of that faith, uh, created our own holiday on the same day called Pie and Beer Day. <laughs> so, uh, and several of the breweries and the bars will pair pie with beer. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. It's pretty good. And the nice thing you'll get savory pies, meat pies, you know, very English. Uh, but yeah. then there'll be sweet pies with sweeter beers. And and it works really okay. well. It's surprising how well it works. Like, the first time I heard of like pie and beer, that's disgusting. And then I had it, I'm like, this is fantastic. This is yeah. the greatest thing ever. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so if, uh, if you're ever in Utah in on July 24th, well, you'll have to partake in Pie and Beer Day. Pie and Beer Day. I've got to remember that one. Yeah. I that was, I must remember that one. Yeah. Rather very clever and, you know, and, and, and entertaining. Yeah. You know, very fun. So, mm. so those, those of us that are not of the predominant faith can celebrate in our own way. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, not of the not of the moron face, Mormon face. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Sorry, guys. Uh, no, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, uh, sorry. Now I I lost my train of thought. I was going to ask you. Um, uh, well, you mentioned that you're doing some writing for for Benediction right now for a, a second album with, or a, not a second album, but a new a new album. Uh, now that you've rejoined, um. So that's definitely exciting news that, that, you know, I'm, I'm excited to hear about that and see where, see where that goes. Um, I mean, it's probably way too early to ask. I mean, if you're just in the writing process, is there any sort of a target date in terms of getting a release out or you? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh, uh, we need to tour for scriptures. We need to get, you know, that <laughs> performed live. We need to get that done. Um, I think, oh, it's going to be at least a, a couple of years. Right? Thing is, things might change. Yeah. Things might change. So, again, we got to hurry up and wait. Um, and we, we might be, we might do another album because it, you don't know what's going to happen with this pandemic, with these variants that come along. You know, we might be stuck indoors for a, a, another two years. And if that's yeah. the case, yeah, we will write something and. Uh, I mean, for example, uh, I've done, uh, let's see, with Roger Johansson, you, you, that guy, uh, I've done one, two, three, four, I've done about six, seven albums with him. I've never met him. Really? Really. Wow. It's all been done across the internet. So 
you know, if, if necessary, Benediction's next album will be done on the internet. Wow. Like, um, but I don't think it's going to come to that. Yeah. I mean, as much as doing that, it would be good. It won't be the same as a, you know, everyone in the studio doing the same thing. Um, uh, but uh, let's just hope for the best. You know? yeah. I'm just going to, again, hurry up and wait, which right. is beginning to piss me off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's I want to get back cool. out and play gigs. Yeah, I think I see that a lot, like especially you know in metal forums, just you know people really missing live music, you know, really wanting to be able to to be in that event, you know, back in a venue again. I mean, yeah, it's been. Yeah. I think the the very last show I went to was right before everything got shut down. It was March of 2020, um, early mm. March, um, and. You know, at the time, America, we had we didn't have very many cases at that time, but Europe was getting hit pretty hard. And uh, yeah, especially, the, yeah, Italy at the time, I remember. One of the bands I saw uh, that night, I interviewed a singer, and one, and he was Italian, and he barely got home before they shut down the country. Like, in yeah, fact, yeah. I think he had to. I don't know if he had to bribe somebody to let him get back in, uh, but you know, and then he's been there since. But yeah, I mean, he he was like right at the cutoff where they shut everything down. Yeah. You, know, was, you know, Italy at that time was really bad. So, yeah, it was. It um, was. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get past this and then not too just get, you know, get these festivals going again. And yeah, because yeah, I need to, I need to get to, yeah, one of the, I've always wanted to go to Bloodstock. Um, okay, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. If, if, are you going to get this year? No, I won't be. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping someday. You know, it's, okay. I really want to go. There's, there's some friends of mine that are playing uh, oh, this okay. year. Uh, they're called Raised by Owls. Oh, okay. I've heard of them. If they are one of the greatest British bands. I mean, after an addiction. Um, but, and, and Bolt Thrower. Uh, but they are awesome. They're so funny. Also, if you check out their videos, they do um, uh, on, on their, their Raised by Owls YouTube channel. Please, people, go and check them out. They are hilarious. And musically, they're great, too, if you're really into that fast and <laughs> vocal stuff, and which I like. Yeah. Um, and especially these guys, because I love their sense of humor. Yeah. Nice. I don't know if you remember, there was the, a Christmas. They did the uh, Do They Know It's Christmas with the death metal singers. I, I, I did it. Oh. Carl from Memoriam uh, was, was doing it. It was those guys, Raised by Owls, that uh, put it all together. Okay. They, okay. They, yeah, they I do it. remember that. Nice. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's Those boys. Fun. So please go support them. They're so so funny. They're so good. Nice. Right. And That's good great. friends as well. Nice. Very cool. Um. Uh. So a couple other. You know, I don't want to keep you all night, but I, I there were a couple other That's things right. I wanted to ask you about. I know. Uh. Uh. Two other passions of yours. Uh. I think. Uh, are 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 canines or dogs. Um, oh yes, and then uh, I noticed you—you you seem to have a fairly large vinyl collection. Oh no, it's not that big. Oh, okay, really, it, it's about uh, two hundred pieces, and okay. that's really nothing. Um, because let's say back in after I left Bolt Thrower, uh, I left because of uh, health reasons, and I actually became quite sort of self-destructive, mm -hmm. and I thought oh, I'll get rid of my vinyl. And I just sold so many pieces. And it was so stupid of me because I gave, I was basically giving away to, at, for ridiculous prices at the secondhand store. Um, classic slices of vinyl. Wow. And um, so I, I sort of feel bad, but I'm, I'm beginning to get them back. Also, right. I had a, a bunch of them stolen. Um, and, uh, but, uh, well... That pikey will get his day one day. Yeah. Anyway, um, and but yeah, it, it's not a massive collection. Like I say, it's about two hundred. Uh, so that which is nothing. Some of my friends over here, they've thousands upon thousands in wow. their vinyl collection. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, I'm I've quite happy with mine because you know, I, I, if if I get any more, I'm not going to have any more space. Yeah, that's yeah. that's my problem. I've, yeah. I've run out of space. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, it means I'm going to either have to stop buying vinyl or get start getting rid of my Daleks. And there's, <laughs> you know, one one either of those things is going to happen. Yeah. Neither of those things. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah. You can't do that. You can't. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's I've I've found, and I think that's been 
what's been a little bit problematic too for me just in terms of my 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 wallet is uh, with the pandemic as I've purchased a ridiculous amount of vinyl uh, over this past year you know one trying to support bands because I think you know you know especially right. bands aren't able to tour um, and I want to be supportive of you know especially my favorite you know my favorite musicians and and I love vinyl so yeah I've, I've purchased way too much vinyl it's it's ridiculous mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I I well, I had, I had some vinyl turn up today, actually. Uh, it was my very first, I mean, I posted about it on Facebook uh, a couple of hours ago. Uh, it was my very first purchase from Discogs. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, and it's the uh, vinyl from uh, the band The Skeletal. Hmm. So um, I've, I've been after that for a, a long time. So I thought I'd take the plunge and try Discogs. And uh, lo and behold... Well, I think it was less than a week that yeah. it arrived. So, but okay, yeah. it did come from Germany. So, right, yeah. Well, that's the nice. Yeah, Discogs. There's a lot you can find. A lot of, especially rare. I mean, some of it gets pretty pricey, but you can find some pretty yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm actually trying to find out how much. Do you know the band Blind Illusion? Yes, from the sort of the well, the '80s. Really, they had that yeah. album, uh, the, the Sane Asylum okay i yeah. have a test pressing of that album oh, wow. a, a white label and no one on discogs is putting up you know uh, it's uh, uh you know it's it's worth this much it's worth that much whatever there's there's nothing on there so if anyone out there who's a, a vinyl buff who knows how much it's worth um I'd, I'd love to sell it um basically not not because i need the money but it's going to help me buy equipment recording equipment for doing other albums cool. that's basically what I, I, I use my money oh oh and of course tattoos <laughs> oh yeah but, um uh, but and, and sometimes beer <laughs> but uh but yeah I, I i'm gonna need a a new bunch of microphones and obviously headphones i'm using some cheap headphones today that i, I bought for f like four dollars at some uh you know dollar store whatever down the road with the danish equivalent of a dollar store all right so, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, it's just stuff like that. So, but uh, I, I, if I could find out how much that's worth, I would be very pleased because Discogs is no help in, in this one. Have you, uh, have you tried any of the, the vinyl shops in Copenhagen? Yeah, they, they've only given me a few books for it. Oh, okay. Because they're, well, they don't care how much it's worth. Oh, it's, right. Uh, so, because I mean, they're not, they would then try and sell it for, hundreds and hundreds of dollars right uh, and even though they give me like oh well five <laughs> yeah it's like yeah yeah sure right um but no uh I'd, I'd rather do it for you know to someone who knows it's worth yeah not just because of the money but you know they, they'll actually appreciate the the vinyl as well yeah actually, that's is equally as important right right as well as the money yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely definitely um and you're also uh as i as i mentioned before you're you're a you're a dog lover you've uh yes i own two dogs or rather they own me and the family all right um we have a uh, black cocker spaniel called clara um she's blind in one eye and um yeah we sort of saved her from being destroyed because she's a it's like a pure purebred dog Mm. and the, the, this, this guy was going to destroy her because she had a, the problem with her eye. And he said, oh, I won't be able to sell her. So we're like, we'll have her. Yeah. Right. And the other one is a little, uh, about this big, um, her name's Bella, and she's a, a, a mix of a Pekingese and um, Dachshund. Oh. And uh, she's, um, yeah, she's a very precocious little princess. Nice. I call her the princess of barkness. <laughs> nice. That's um, uh, yeah, but she's very, I would say, uh, the, the Clara, the, the Cocker Spaniel, is my wife's and my son's dog. And Bella, the, the little one, she's mine. Um, I mean, you can't see because my, my own hair is covering it. But I, I put on a fresh T-shirt before we were doing this interview. And Bella came and jumped on my lap and sort of rubbing herself around. And when I looked down, I'm covered in dog hairs. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, thanks, Bella. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have the same. We have a pug. 
his name is Hugo. And oh, oh, yeah. And his old uh, little. I mean, I love him, but he, he's a little shit. <laughs> but you know, same thing. I, you know, I'm, I usually, you know, as a metalhead, I'm usually in black t-shirts, and yeah, I look down and I'm just covered in white hair. Yeah. Good yeah. God, <laughs> I can't mm. go anywhere. No, no. It's, it's, no, I had that. I, 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 I went to the the dentist a couple of days ago, and the, my dentist, she said to me, like, "Have you got a cat?" I was like, "No, <laughs> it's my dog." <laughs> did you Did you grow up with dogs? Have you always been a, a oh, dog? Lover? Yeah yeah um i don't remember a time when i've never had a dog really i think maybe the first few years of living in denmark um besides that uh yeah i've I've always had dogs so um we don't deserve them. They're, they're amazing creatures yeah and uh don't ever say you own a dog because you don't they own you right oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. There's, there's no way that you own them no, no. Especially that red one of mine, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Um, well, uh, I don't want to keep you. Uh, I just have one one last question for you. Okay, man. Uh, so uh, my, you know, as you know, my uh, my blog is Bruising Tunes. I pair heavy metal with craft beer. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, oh, uh, so uh, mother's David ruin. Ingram? Sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's good. no that was mother's ruin. Oh, okay. Gin. Oh, cool. Uh, so it's a it's a Friday night, Saturday night. You know, David Ingram sitting home, uh, hanging out. What uh, what beer do you crack open, and what what album do you put on? What what would you be pairing? Well, uh, Friday, Saturday night. Those are the only two days that I drink. Okay. I absolutely refuse to drink any other day, uh, especially well if it's a work day. Next day, I, I I'm very responsible for my job um so so yeah friday and saturday nights those are my beer nights um it'll be one of these anarchist ipas that i, I i'm drinking right now one of these nice these uh, i absolutely love them and if it's music well if i'm home and i'm not doing interviews like this uh, i'll be in the other room with my wife and we'll either be watching some tv together or we might put on uh, music on youtube and chat while while the music's on and we take it in turns to play songs or albums and stuff cool. but if it's for me to, to play an album i'd say it's the them crooked vultures album or something by and probably this one in fact queens of the stone age oh yeah great album very cool i absolutely love that it's right next to me um but yeah, uh, I'm a huge Queens of the Stone Age fan. Cool. Uh, uh, you can't see it because it, it's not quite finished yet, but. Oh, yeah, cool. That looks great. Queens of the Stone Age tattoo. It, it, I was supposed to have it finished last week, but um, you know, when I get tattoos, I don't heal very quickly. It's taken it two months, two oh. months to wow. heal properly. Um so my tattoo, he said, like, yeah, give it a, another few weeks. So, yeah, it's July. So, uh, uh, no, sorry, 15th of June I'm going in. Not July. That, that would be too bloody long. But, yeah, um, I'm a huge Queens of the Stone Age fan. So I play a lot of that. I'm getting into a lot of the uh, desert rock stuff. I mean, I'm into Caius and Red Fang. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, what's the other band? Well, they, I think they're actually just called Stone. Uh, no, um, Vista Chino. That hmm. was it. Vista Chino. It's uh, some of the ex-members of Caius. Oh, okay. Rather than redoing Caius, they did their own band. And it's really very good. So Nice. And I'll, I'll, I'll listen to that. Alternatively, uh, I will sit right here where I'm sat now, look at this laptop, uh, put a movie on, and then fall asleep. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> which, which happens almost every week. My wife will come in and, and sort of nudge me and say, go to bed. And, and I'll just carry on snoring or something. Um, but tonight for, for watching on the laptop here, uh, I have the uh, 1970 movie Catch-22. I've never seen it. Oh, great movie. So uh, I, I, I need to see that. And then for um, dessert, it would be, um, it's a, like a, a, a a documentary drama uh, about Delia Derbyshire. Hmm. Now, she was the woman behind the Doctor Who theme. 
the original. Oh, okay. oh nice. And, and she was also being credited as one of the first electronic music pioneers. I consider her a music pioneer, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's about her life, and it's a, it's a drama, but it's, it's all about, you know, what she did and how she did it. And uh, I've, I, it was on television about two weeks ago. I've never seen it. And uh, a friend of mine uh, made a copy of it for me and mailed it. Uh, oh, cool. uh, we transferred it. So, oh, oh, uh, before we go, uh, hang on. Bella. Oh no, nope, she's running away. No, my, my my dog. She's she came in, drank some water. I called her, and she fucked off. <laughs> yeah. Well, as you said, you know, she, you're yeah, you're not the yeah, master. Yeah. You're not the master. She is. Yeah, yeah. Princess of Barkness. Yeah. I have to do uh, my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, uh, but that that that'll be what I'll be watching later. Uh, that sorry, that'll be what I'm falling asleep to later. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Well, uh, David, it was uh, it was fantastic meeting with you. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to chat with me. Um, uh, you know, best of luck with the, with the, with this year, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll see benediction on the road in the not too distant future. Um, you know, again, uh, uh, this album was is phenomenal. I'm you know, I'm super excited you're back in the band, um, and uh, looking forward to a. Uh, uh, the future of, of the band and see where, where you go. And also, um, as I said before, I'll, I'll post some links. Everybody look, you know, look down in the description of this interview. There'll be some cool links for you to check out uh, music and, and, uh, and the podcast that you do as well. Um, so uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure speaking with you, Hales. All right, mate. Thank Cheers. you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Cheers. And uh, let me just say, like, chatting about beers... Right, that that this is so pleasant. It's like <laughs> being in a pub and talking yeah. about different beers, like. So, um, if ever you want me back on, just give us a shout, man. I'll be Will right do. there. Will do.